Welcome to this video. In this video, we will learn how to create parameters in SSRS. We will learn how to create a basic text parameter. We will learn how to create a drop down parameter. We will learn how to handle null values in parameters. And last but not least, we will learn how to create a date parameter. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I have a basic data set of an employee. Uh, let me just run the report and show you a basic data set so what i want at the moment is i want the user who's running the report to have the ability to filter the department and see the list of employees by the department themselves so how do we do that in order to do that we'll go to our design view and then we will create a parameter from our sql script i find that much more easier to create it rather than creating a parameter and then sending up uh the filters i i'm more comfortable with this so if i go to my data set i'll right click on it i'm going to add a where clause over here and so let me just paste that clause so it's going to be where my department code is in the department so in you would use an in expression or an in statement if you have multiple values that you like to select However, you can use an O expression, an O operator, if you want to select only one particular value. So do remember that if you try to put, if you try to put equals over here and in your parameter, you will select or you will allow multiple values, you will get an error. So in is for multiple values, O is for a single value. And in order to set up a parameter, you would use an add symbol. And in, in that add symbol, you can define your parameter over here. It's always a good practice to put brackets as well when you are defining a parameter. It's just a good practice. And so when you click on OK, as soon as you're going to click on OK, you will see that a parameter will automatically get created under the parameter folder. At the moment, I do not have any parameter created. So as soon as I click on Create, as soon as I click on OK, you'll see that a parameter has been created for me. So this is one of the ways that I prefer creating a parameter within the data set rather than creating a parameter and then going and creating the uh, filters within the parameter so that everything within my script is controlled from here. Now let's go to the parameter properties. In order to go to the parameter properties, you will right click on it and select parameter properties. Under the parameter properties, you would see the general tab. We will start from the general tab and then we'll go through the others as well. Under the name, this is the name of your parameter and we have already specified our name in our script. So this is going to be the name. If you are planning to put a name over here, you can put a name, but just ensure that there is no space. You can use underscore or dash. If you use space, then you will also find issues or an error message while you are running your report next we have the prompt this prompt can be customized to however you like this prompt will appear on the report when the user runs it they'll be able to see this so if you want you can put a sentence over here so maybe you know select department and you can also put symbols over here as well there's not going to be any issue so this is the prompt that the user will see at the point of running the report you will be required to select the data type. The data type over here has this much options. We will work with the default one, which is the text, which is also the most common data type over here. If you're using a numeric, you can use integer or field. If you're using a date, then you can use this and Boolean is for any Boolean. So that's, we'll keep it to the text. And so we will cover the null values in a while. You also have the multiple allow multiple values option as well and again we will show you that well that one as well in this video session so what i want to do right now is i'm just going to cancel this and i would like to take you back to my data set because i would like to mention you over here that the data set the where clause that i have used against my parameter is a string type so the department code that i'm going to use to fetch the list of all the departments is um string type and therefore what i'm going to do is i'm going to go cancel it i'm going to go back to my department parameter 
and I'm going to leave it as a text because this is going to be a string. It's not any other type. It's not an integer. It's not a data time. It's not a boolean. It's not a, a float. And so therefore, I'm going to use text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the report as it is, as a text. I'm going to run the report over here. And I click on run. So it will ask me to select a department. And now it's asking me to enter myself manually uh, a, a string of it. So if I just enter 01, which is uh, one of my department codes, if I click on your report, it will run the report and it will show me all the administration, which is 01 in my department code. Now what we will do is we will go back to our design view and we will go back to our parameter properties of department. And let me select allow multiple values and let me run it for you and see what happens. So as I tick on to the allow multiple values, I'll click on OK, and now I will run the report. You will see that the report is now showing as a drop down list whereby it's asking me to enter or to select it from the option. Now, you want, if you want, you can go ahead and type it yourself manually. So if I, and I can go ahead and type multiple values, so maybe 0, 01 and then type 0, 02 as well. And let me just show you by clicking on view report to run it and as you can see the report does run for me and as as the report understands that it requires a multiple value for the user to import so as i select multiple values i can go ahead and select the report will still run the value for me over here now there's a way of course to get the uh, values from the particular table and of course i will be showing you that in a while so what we will do now is we will actually try to go and get the default values over here. So in order to do that, what we will do is we will go to our design view. We'll go to our parameter properties and we'll go to the, to the next step, which is the available values. Under the available values, what we want to do is you can specify values if you want to, or you can get a value from a particular query. Now, if you're using specify values, you, this is not an ideal solution because if there's a new department added into your organization, you will be required to come in and add that over here to make that visible. So I wouldn't recommend you using this, rather you can get a value from a query. So we will do this option and in order to get this, we will have to create another data set. So let's exit this for now and let's create another data set. And this data set would be distinct department. So I'm going to put distinct underscore department and I'm going to select my data source over here and I'm going to paste in my query and if you like you can post this but this is the syntax so I'm going to select distinct uh, department code and department from the department table. Now you will notice that my where clause has the department code into it so I would need to ensure that my available, when I go to my available, I will use the department code as my value field. So I'll click on OK. And you will notice that I have another data set that has been created. And you will notice that I have my second data set that has been created over here. So what we will do now is we will go back to our parameter properties. And under our parameter properties, we will go to our available values. And now we will get values from a query. We will select our data set. In this case, it's going to be distinct department. The value field would be department code. This is where we want our value to match. And then the level, the, the label, basically the description that we want to show in our dropdown would be the department itself. So value would be the department code. If I click on OK, and if I go to this data set, you will notice that we have used the department code as our value in our script therefore in the available we would get the values from the department code now if i click on ok and now if i run this uh, report you would see that if i click on it i have the option over here i have the option over here to select a particular department or all if i want or multiple if i want and run it so let me just do that and let me show it to you so there you go and if I select multiple, it will allow me to run. Now, when I had run the report, you had noticed that the report had run blank. 
and it was asking me to select a department. What if I want by default to run all the options over here and then later if the user wants, they can deselect and select their own. So to do that, we'll go back to our design view and then we will go to our parameter properties. Under the parameter properties, we will now go to default values. And again, you can specify a default value if, if you want a specific value to be there running. Uh, again, I use, I would I would go ahead with uh, values. Um, and so I would select my distinct department and I would select my value as department code. The value would be the ID that is going to match in your script. The label is going to be the description that will come. Always remember that. And so we will click and we will run the report. Now, if I run this report, you will notice that it has selected all the options by default and it's showing me all. Now, if I want, I can deselect and I can specify a particular department and click on view in order for my data set to get refreshed. So there you have it, guys. This is how we can create a basic parameter, basic text parameter. And so mm -hmm. now what we will do is we will create another parameter and this time we will put a date filter. So let's go ahead and create another per parameter. Uh, what I would do is I would go to my SQL and I would create another parameter in my where clause. And I prefer, this is my personal preference over here. It's much more easier for me. And as you can notice, it, it's, it's much more easier to get things done over here. So we will add another course, clause. And so what I have done is I have added a new clause where my start date is greater than or equal to joined from. So when I click on OK, there is another parameter that will get created. This parameter is basically going to ask from where the start date you want the employees to run the report from. So what is the joint date that you want the report to see? So if you want to see new employees, you can select this date. And so uh, my name is correct. Uh, I'm My prompt is OK as well. My type would be date and time. And let's run this. So when we click on OK and we will run this report, you will notice that uh, the department does select all. However, it's asking for another parameter to select from the date of the start. So if I select a particular date now, if I and if you notice that when you click onto this calendar icon, you'll see you'll get a calendar icon, and then you can select the months. If I click on this, it will select the year the range if I want. So maybe if I go back to two thousand and December and 31st. And if I view this report over here, you would see all employees who joined from December 2000. Maybe that's a little too vague. So let's let's put uh, 2015 maybe. And let's run the report. And then you will see all the employees who has joined from 2015 till now. So that is as simple as that, how you can create a basic date parameter if you would like to create uh, a default value as well you can always go to the parameter properties and under the default value you can specify a particular date over here and so what happens if you would want to have a start and an end date as well so you want to see a list of employees that has started from that particular date till a particular date so what we can do is we can use a between clause in our script. So if we go to our data set and instead of uh, greater than, we will use a between clause. So what we will do is we'll modify our uh, script over here where the start date is. So what we will do is we'll put that the start date instead of greater than or equal to what we will do is we'll put between. And at joint maybe deal. And what we will do is we'll click on OK. And you'll see uh, there will be another parameter that will get created. We'll go on to the parameter properties and we'll modify the date type into uh, the data type into date. And so we'll click on OK. And now let's run the report. So as you can see, there's two parameters that it shows. If I'm going to select over here from 2015, 
1st January and I can select the end date maybe um, till 2017 December and now if I run this report it will only show those employees that had joined in 2015 till 2017 if I want to put it till 2015 if I click on one you'll notice it will show you as at between these two dates period now if you want to reorder your parameter let's suppose let's take this for an example if you want the department option to come towards the end of your parameter and you want the dates to be selected first all you have to do is click on the particular parameter use this arrow to move your parameter down and when you do that if you run the report you will see that you can now reorder your parameter so that's a simple thing to, you know, to reorder your parameter and that is all from this video so i hope you have enjoyed watching this video if so please do give a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel i will see you in the next video thank you